on air. Let it on think. air. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the August 14th edition of the QuickBooks for Contractors Hangout. Um, even though I'm anonymous, I'm really Nancy Smith with Sunburst Software. And uh, tonight's topic is handling prevailing wages by county, which is a brand new law that's been implemented in Missouri. Um, and I'm sure, yay, yeah, Bruce is like all excited. Oh, um, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've talked to several of our customers in the last couple of weeks, and they have just all been like groaning. How do we do this? Um, you know, it used to be really easy. It was one prevailing wage across the entire state. So... Everybody could have like two different payroll items in QuickBooks. They could have hourly and they could have prevailing wage hourly. And, you know, they may want to add more payroll items if they have a lot of different work classifications. But, I mean, for somebody who did just one thing, like an electrician, they could just have prevailing wage. Now, with this done by county, they're all like wrecking their brains on how do we do this? How do we know we're getting the right rate of pay on the right job for the right employee for whatever? Because we work in like three, four counties, five counties, and uh, it it really adds a whole nother layer of to dos for anybody who's running payroll. So I did a blog post for Bruce and figured that I would follow it up with this this hangout and actually show people how if I had to go to Missouri and do prevailing wage as as a bookkeeper or play, payroll clerk how I would set things up in QuickBooks and how I would attempt to keep my keep all my hair um Oh, it'll fall out. Pulling it out? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to pull it out. <laughs> it, it, it falls out well enough by itself. So, it, first of all, I want to start with, let me screen share this. And we're going to do this. And we're going to start screen share. Here is the lovely Bless you. Missouri um, Certified Payroll Report. And I'm going to open this up to like 150% so you can. Thank you. All, all kind of see. Wow, that looks awful of, familiar. Doesn't it though? Oh, headache. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing it induces a headache. Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> well, what I want to talk about is that funny, long winded statement that is on the second page where somebody has to sign just above where it says you know the falsification of any of the above statements may subject the contractor or subcontractor to criminal prosecution okay the big thing is somebody at the contractor or subcontractors office um, sometimes it's the poor payroll clerk is the person who signs this stuff what she is signing and stating is that she pays or supervises the payment of all the people who are employed by the company on a specific project. And that all persons on the said project have been paid the full weekly wages stated above that no rebe rebe yeah, rebates yeah, no rabies, have been or will be made either directly or indirectly to or on behalf of the company, which means the company isn't requiring the employees to kick back and or give back any part of these prevailing wages because they are much higher, and that no deductions have been made either directly or indirectly other than legally permissible deductions that the full and accurate records clearly, clearly indicate the names, occupations, and crafts of every worker employed by them in connection with the public work together with an accurate record, which means behind the scenes payroll data of the number of hours worked by each worker 
actual wages paid for each class or type of work performed, and, and deductions that were made for each worker. Um, now, there's one thing that I tend to disagree with. Um, it says that you only should keep these records or not remove them or destroy them for a period of one year following the completion of the public works. Um, Fair Labor Standards Act, um, which is at the federal level, um, people are actually recommending that you keep your payroll records for 10 years after the project is done or after an employee is released from working with your company. And that's because there is no statute of limitations for an employee to file um, a claim with Fair Labor Standards Act against a company. So it, this is this has become like a really big issue. So even though the state says keep them for a year, I say keep all this stuff for ten years. Does now, is that, is that all across the country or just Missouri? Um, Fair Labor Standards Act is nationwide. Um, Missouri is is like. It, it, a year, but like California says, you need to keep all the behind the scenes payroll records for at least three years after you've completed the project. Um, Connecticut, it used to be five years after you completed the project or, or after the entire project was completed. So com five years after you complete your piece or five years after the full contract is done. Um, but with with the Fair Labor Standards Act, that comes in and kind of supersedes all of the state requirements. And because an employee can f go and file a wage prevailing wage complaint um, against a company, there's no statute of limitations on that. So if you have a disgruntled worker and you fire him, you know, three years later, he could go and he could file a claim. Now, if you were in Missouri, you've only kept those records for a year. Um, so you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, so it's really important that you keep your payroll records, and, and I say keep everything in PDF and uh, electronic storage. I mean, I'm certainly not saying that you need to keep 10 years worth of data in your QuickBooks file because for many people that QuickBooks file couldn't even like open anymore um, <laughs> yeah. you know so you know, keep your payroll records filed electronically and what I mean by that is when, every week when you get through with payroll run a payroll summary report save it to a PDF um, Nancy, when you use like a um, an outside company to process payroll for you know ADP, paychecks, into it, whomever, do you know how long they keep their data files? I, I don't, because I, I don't deal with any of them. Okay. Um, they keep them until you're no longer on their service any longer. I have had dealings with um, people that have been on paychecks or ADP and then have gone off of it and then later on needed those records and were not able to access them. So then really what should happen is after each payroll run you just need to save them locally to your server or whatever. As a PDF. Yep. 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 Absolutely. And, and make practice. sure that that folder wherever you're saving it is being backed up. Yeah, it would probably and, be like Dropbox or something where it's synced. Yeah, it, you know, I mean it, something something that's safe and secure so there's there's that little piece. Secure, yeah right secure. what's secure these days uh, my computer <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your computer is do you have a wireless connection in your home yes I do and you it is not locked safe. down it is <laughs> locked down so bad that some days I can't even get on it yeah there's some pretty smart people out there what, not in West Charleston, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have to be there. Yeah. That's I, the scary part. You can be anywhere. Yeah. You can be sitting at a Starbucks in 
kumquat Italy. I don't know. <laughs> and do whatever. But it, it, I have a, an external hard drive that um, I back everything up to. Good. And it, it it's the cutest little thing. Hold on. Look at that. And that's two terabytes. Wow. That's amazing. How often do you back up your backup? Um, from here, once a month, it gets backed up to... Ben has a bigger one, much bigger one, that's fireproof, mm -hmm. that sits on his desk. And once every quarter, I actually back things up to a DVD and take them to the bank and put them in the security box. Good job. Because, you know, those external drives can fail. I know they can. I've had it happen to me twice. Wow. Wow. Yeah. One of them was a really bad one because we lost a lot of music that um, Steve had recorded on our home office uh, studio. It was uh. a real bummer. Yeah, I bet it was. I bet it was. So, let's get back to good old Missouri. Yeah. You want to go to the Missouri Department of Labor and Industries, and that's where you're going to find your prevailing wage determinations. Now, can you guys still see this? I don't think I turned no, off screen. No, we're not screen shared. We're seeing you. Oh, all right. I must have shut this stinking thing off. Hold on half a second. Oh, now I have, like, more browsers than I know what to do with open. <laughs> I put some links up to Missouri websites. Okay. You should be able to see that now. I see Nancy. You still see me. All right. Why? Screen share. It's not following your orders today. There you go. There he is. Okay. This is a prevailing wage decision for Jackson County. And they say unofficial copy, and that's just probably because all of this stuff has just been updated in, oh, not even uh, the last month. Um, so right now everything is unofficial, I think, while they're trying to get their tuchuses together. So when does all of this go into effect then? It went. It, the the rates by county actually went into f effect. Um, what middle of July? Gotta love it when they can't get their paperwork together. Yeah, no. How do they expect people to follow these rules if they can't <laughs> tell them what they are? I don't think they expect you to follow them correctly. Uh, well, well, hopefully they're not retroactive either. Uh, no, it's just supposed to be from like that point forward, um, and so it, we're going to work with just one work classification. We're, we're going to work with carpenters, and we're going to do it over three different counties. So on the 13th of June, the carpenter base rate of pay became. 3605 with a fringe rate of 1455. We're also going to look at there we go um, Boone County and Saline County. Now there's a huge difference in pay rates between these three counties. Um, and and if, if you were to look at a map Saline's kind of in the middle, so it would be really feasible for a contractor to go into Jan Jackson County and work or over into Boone County and work. Say, so give me a minute, I have that picture. Oh, cool. Um, Dennis is trying to get in. I'm sorry to interrupt. And where is Dennis? Oh, let me find Dennis. You might have to invite him. <laughs> He's in Washington. <laughs> All right, let me go find uh, Dennis. I got oh, I know why he can't today, get in, good. because he hasn't liked my business page. So can really? one of you, yeah, can, you, can one of you guys, like, invite him? Okay. Yeah, because he doesn't show up 
anywhere. Okay. Let's see if I can get him. So, huh? it, it, Bruce and I had quite a long discussion about this via Facebook chat. What was it? One Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, about the blog post that I was going to do. So Saline County, we have a rough guess that a, a carpenter would normally make like nine dollars an hour when he worked on a non-prevailing wage job within the county. So I have a picture. Give me a second. Okay, I'll just keep running my mouth. Okay. Um, so you stop and think that nine dollars an hour that that company pays that carpenter when he's working in Saline, and they go over to Jackson County, and now it working on a prevailing wage job. We're talking going from nine bucks an hour to a base rate of thirty six oh five and fourteen fifty five in fringes, or a total of fifty dollars and sixty cents an hour. That's a huge, huge jump. Now, if they went the other way and went to Boone County, um, prevailing wage rate over there for a carpenter is twenty-four oh nine, fourteen fifty-five in fringes for a total of thirty-eight fifty-four. Here's Boone. Okay, show Saline and then Jackson. Boone's all the way to the far right. Where my mouse is, Saline's kind of in the middle. One county separates them. Then Jackson County's over on the far left, where Kansas City is, where I'm at. Again, only one county <coughs> separates Saline. Now, if if that same contractor who was based out of Saline did a worked on a prevailing wage job there, his guys would then be paid twelve ninety six an hour with no fringes. So we've got huge discrepancies. Differences. For, uh, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, we're talking Richter scale differences. So having done this before, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of said, okay, well, I'll set up a goofy little QuickBooks file, and we'll talk about some ways to. Uh, deal with this. Now again, it, these are just some ways and we're only going to talk about if a contractor is um, non-union and he's paying all those fringes in cash. And, and I want to point out because I actually had this discussion with a contractor. Shut up, telephone. <laughs> um, <laughs> It doesn't matter what county you are from. It matters where you're doing the work. Correct. It's always where the work is that makes the difference. I, I had I had a gentleman argue with me that because he was in Jackson County, he used that in whatever county he was in. And oh, I ended he up winning the conversation, but I lost a client. I'm sure. Well, it, you at least told him the truth. Well, yeah. So you know. This um, flows all the way back to job costing. When you bid a job, you also have to figure out what county the job's going to be in Correct. and increase. Oh my goodness! Correct. This bites. So I'm glad you're in California. <laughs> uh, California is just as bad. Really? I hate to tell you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, California is horrible, mainly because. California is a really big union state, and contractors that are are non-union, and they go work on these prevailing wage jobs. It, it, their lives become pretty miserable. Um, a, a lot of times, they're on, they're they're forced into becoming a union contractor out there. So basically, I don't want to be involved with any company that's going to have to deal with prevailing wages. There you go. You know, you I guys are all wussy. Yes, ma'am. And I'll help set it up. <laughs> well, that'd be the only way it would happen for me. I offer it, Nancy. I offer it because I have an in with you guys, but nobody likes the fact that I'm extremely honest about this situation. Well, a lot of people don't. You know, I mean, a lot of people want to be able to say, oh, I didn't know. Yep. 
So one way that you could set this up is in your customer center you could create customers for the different counties that you're going to work in. So I've got Boone, Jackson, and Saline. And then I also have a private regular job because if I'm going to work in all three of these counties on prevailing wage jobs and still do private jobs, I need to be able to figure out what job goes with what wage decision, a.k.a. which company. So this is one way that you could set it up. And as you got jobs in Boone County, you just come in and you'd add a job. And there you go. Okay. Um, I was going to say Delaware and Pennsylvania have been doing this for a while too, and they do exactly what you're doing. It ends. You end up with a huge um, payroll list of it items. Yep. Um, but there's no way around it. You have to have an item per county, per person, because different persons have different rates too. Yep. Whether you're the foreman, whether you're a worker, whether whatever. And and see, I instead of saying per person, I do it by county and by work class. Okay. Okay. So in my payroll item list. And I would code it so that I would know, like all my payroll items that related to um, Boone County, I would start them with a B. Got it. That's an excellent idea. And I would go in and I would do B Carpenter. Okay, and this was this would be the payroll item I would use for all of my guys that fell under the classification of Carpenter in Boone County. And then I would do another one. Sorry, Max washed my glasses for me and they're not the cleanest that were ever invented. <laughs> and then a I would lot of love went behind that cleaning. I, I, yes, there was. And then I would do my J Carpenter for Jackson County. And then when I entered um, time for my employees, then it's just and and it does it gets it gets complicated. But if you set it up and and code things, you're going to have a built-in cross reference. Okay. So here I'm going to come get my job one in Boone County and I'm going to do my Boone Carpenter and of course I don't have any money set up but it, you go in and you enter the hours and then if I had another job I would just grab that other job grab that other payroll item um, obviously I would also choose a service item so it would get job costed and that's going to give me the backbone for complying with those records that clearly indicate number of hours worked, rate of pay, and work classification. I'm also throwing in county here too. So that's also, uh, excuse me, Nancy. There, there are, there are. You've got carpenters, but I know electricians that will go to Celine and work on a job for three hours. And go to another county and work on another job for four hours. And yep. go to a third job, and whoever, if he's all doing that for all the same people, that has to be separated on his timesheet. Three hours here, four hours it, there. Correct. Yep. By by job. So here, let me let me go back to my customer center. Let's go to Jackson County, and we'll add a job here. So now we get a Jackson County job. We'll come back to our timesheet. Yeah, go away. Don't want it billable anyway. So now we come and grab our Jackson County job. 
grab our Jackson County Carpenter rate. And yes, I'm doing it over different days, but I mean, you could do this, you know, four hours in, in Boone County, four hours in Jackson County. The main thing is, is you split that all up. So that's one way of doing it. Now, in order to help you stay to, well organized, if you set up your customer job list like this, you can download and save that um, PDF, and then you can attach it to the job record so that you know all the, I mean, you have that right there at your fingertips. And I'm going to save this, and where the heck am I going to save it? Oh, I'll just save it on my desktop. So that you can keep that wage decision attached to the, the customer, which is really the county, and that way, if anybody comes to you and wants to know, well, how did you figure out, um, you know, what wage decision did you use, you can then just plunk it right up. Now, you got to remember that anything that you attach to um, a record in QuickBooks gets saved in a different folder and it's not backed up when you um, do a QuickBooks backup so you want to make sure that that folder is always backed up so you're in an audit and they say what was the wage decision that you used for your Boone County jobs you just come and you just open that PDF right up and you can say this is where I got my information from. Um, another thing that you can do is you can literally take and put your rates in there. Nancy can I ask a question? Sure. Back on that attach thing you said you have to back up the folder so is the attachment just a link to the original place where that resides? It, yep, wherever it was it, it well, QuickBooks makes a copy of it okay. and puts it in a folder and I will show you where that is. Um, the other thing that you can do is use the notes section. I'm going to interrupt you again. Sure. When you're doing it this way, because you're, you're saying this is one way to track that, how is each one of these on the timesheet separated for that correct wages? That's through that payroll item because when oh, you go because you have to set up each payroll item differently for each county. It, yep. Now the one thing I didn't do was go and pull them into the employee record and I can so that you can see how that goes. So you just come into his payroll and compensation info and you grab that Boone County Carpenter and it's assigned hold on a second, thirty eight fifty four. Oh my god. There it is. <laughs> well Sorry, I've also got I, I've also got two different versions of QuickBooks open here on my machine. Awesome sauce. So, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I got more windows than I know what to do with. And Jackson County is fifty sixty. I'm sorry I don't have all these numbers memorized. It's still something new. Yeah. So when when you come into the employee record and you pull in that Boone County Carpenter payroll item or that Jackson County Carpenter payroll item, you put in the, the rate of pay that they make when they go and they work in those counties on, on jobs there. So when you use that, so then on the timesheet it knows. Yep. Yeah, then then when you select that B carpenter or J carpenter on the timesheet, when you go and correct and 
create your paycheck, it's going to pull all of that timesheet data plus that rate of pay over into the paycheck and it's going to just calculate everything out for you. And I can actually show you how that ends up working. So we're just going to go back here and we'll actually save this timesheet this week. Um, oh, I'll back it up a week, make it interesting. So we got job one, we've got our Boone County, we got five hours, three hours. And just to give you an idea, in Missouri there's 114 counties. Yeah. So if you're na if you're statewide using B, just using the first letter, it isn't going to work. Then you're gonna you're gonna have to get more creative. Exactly. But um, you're talking about 114 counties. If you're building houses or something, that's a lot of different. Yeah. Payroll items. Now QuickBooks Pro and Premier will allow you to store 25 payroll wage items at a time in an employee record. Um, Enterprise will allow 100. So you may have to go in sometimes and swap them out. And we actually have a little tool called Wage Manager that will help you do that. But that's for a different another day yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna pay these employees yeah you can tell this was just a really quick throw it again throw it down a, absolutely and pay period ends today's the 14th that was last week we'll say the 11th and We'll go to David. And when we open his paycheck detail, there it is. There's his Boone County Carpenter rate of 38.54, eight hours on that Boone County job, his Jackson County Carpenter rate at 50.60 eight hours on the Jackson County job, there's his paycheck. Now I'd like to make that kind of money for working 16 hours. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? So that's that's one way you can set it up. Now the other way, and let me open lovely QuickBooks 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh now, Bruce. 2014's coming. <sighs> Shut up, Bruce. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm slapping your face down here, Bruce. <laughs> this is why I can't get my spaghetti sauce, I know. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take a look at QuickBooks 2013 and look at another way to set it up. So we come to our customer center and let's say we've got Jerry's general contractors and we're doing four different jobs from him or for him. We, we can code our jobs underneath him by B for Boone County, J for Jackson County, P is a private job, meaning non-prevailing wage, and then S for Saline County. So again, you know, I mean, the, the more counties you work in, the more organized you have to be, and, and the more you actually have to really sit down and plan this out. I mean, plan it out on paper and make sure that everybody's on the same page because 
you know, from the guys who are submitting time from the field to the payroll clerk to the estimators to project managers, they've all got to be in agreement on how these jobs are named so that when the time actually comes into the payroll clerk, she knows what to pay these guys and pay them correctly. Um, now, about a fair amount of communication too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and everybody's got to get on board. Now and here, they all have to be on the same page. Oh yeah. Now here again, um, you know, use the note section. <coughs> you know, you've got a B for Boone County job. You know, at Carpenter base rate twenty four oh nine. And fringe rate fourteen fifty five for a grand total of thirty eight forty five. Um, again, attach those wage decisions um, as you go on. And say you get another contractor and you do a, a work on another job in the same county. Reference where that wage decision is attached to. I mean, it don't feel like you've got to go nuts and like attach the same wage decision to each job. You know, put it with the first job that you get in that county and then reference back to where the attachment is. Um, so you could do it like that. Now when it comes to your payroll item list, ugh, again, you know, you want to somehow come up with a manageable system for your company that's going to incorporate work classification and county. And whether it's, you know, I mean, would what'd you say, 149 counties? 114. 114. Um, you could do it full county name slash C for carpenter, um, or if you've got carpenters and cement masons, C for carpenter, CM for cement masons. But just make sure that you're clearly identifying, even if it's only with internal codes, on how those different wage rates um, are attached to different jobs. <laughs> Dennis says you're using QuickBooks to track something this complicated. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Human error. Absolutely everything. Um, so you need at least enterprise solution to be able to cover those new payroll items that you have. And now you need the attachment. Uh, feature from QuickBooks because I don't believe that is free. It, it is free in thirteen, twelve, thirteen, and going forward because it saves that attachment on the hard drive of your computer. And oh, if, okay. I thought they were paying for that now. No, that 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 went away. And and hold on a second. Let me. Let me go figure out where I saved this. Uh, public Hangout stuff. Okay. So let me get rid of QuickBooks and let me go to, and I will show you in a second. Okay. All right. Am I screen? No, I'm not screen sharing anymore. God, this is a pain. Okay. And it went away. Look, behave yourself. Thank you. Okay, so here. <laughs> he doesn't want to show us that file. Okay, he, it's going to automatically create an, a, a folder called attach wherever your QuickBooks data file is. So here's Here's my QuickBooks 2012 file where I saved that attachment. If I go in there and go umpteen folders down, there's that Jackson County PDF. 
So it saves those attachments in the same folder where your QuickBooks data file is in a folder called attach. And make sure it's backed up. Um, and make sure that, you know, if, if you move to a new computer, that in addition to moving your QuickBooks file, you also want to move that attach folder, and then it will all re-link up. Um, How again, many additional folders do you need when you do that now? Now we have the attach. <laughs> You're laughing, Dennis. Um, then we have um, the the fixed asset and also the loan manager and what else does not back up when you back up QuickBooks? My brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it, probably just about everything. Um, it, you know, I mean. You almost want to go into that folder where your QuickBooks file is and save absolutely everything. Oh, yeah. I forgot about templates, too. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, this was, this was my main folder in public. I created a folder called Hangout Stuff, and I, then I put in a folder just for um, today, and then I've got a file for my QuickBooks 2012 QuickBooks file and my QuickBooks 2013 file. You know, and I mean, you got auto data recovery, you got restored this, you've got, you know, up here I got my attached, and, you know, I mean, that whole folder really like needs to move with you, just like when you pack up your house. You know, you mm -hmm. instead of putting it in a box, you put it somewhere and move it from one computer to the other until you get ready to give it to Goodwill, <laughs> which is the recycle bin. <laughs> but, it, you know, I mean, you can make QuickBooks work for you. Um, I, I've done it for so many years, I don't think twice about it. But I will tell you, union contractors are going to have it even harder because you could see where the fringe benefit rates between the counties were different. Um, and one of the requirements on that lovely headachey form there that Bruce <laughs> and I've got this so full screen that I can't even tell if you guys can see it or not. No. We're still looking at your uh, QuickBooks folder. Now we're seeing you. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is on. The, here's the statement of compliance. For each employee, they want to know the dollar amount that you're paying per hour for a health and welfare fringe, a pension, a vacation, a holiday, apprenticeship training, um, two other types of fringes that, that the state will allow, and it had darn well better add up to that total fringe package. Um, you have to manually key that stuff in for every single one of those uh, if you if you don't have a program like ours, our okay. add-on, yes. I was wow. say, if you don't have Nancy's program, yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm assuming that yours just kind of goes, okay, take this info and fill it in the right places. Yep. And and it and it actually does the form too, and you print it out um, on on plain paper and submit it. Um, I always tell everybody to download a PDF creator tool. Save those a copy to PDF, and most contractors will actually have what they call a job folder on their computer. It kind of it, it, they use it in the same way I used to use a, a, a five-inch three-ring notebook back in the old days yeah. um, for a job file, and everything that w had to do with that job was in that three ring binder or with in with these guys it goes in a folder on their computer and some of the folks I work with are extremely organized um, and I mean they can, you ask them for anything and they can go get it in seconds 
Well, you'd have to be to do this kind of work. I mean, if, if you're not really, really organized, talk about getting totally messed up. It, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. You've got clients like that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, Nancy, the system doesn't work. It's not working. <laughs> it. It doesn't work. What's it? <laughs> you, because you're disorganized. <laughs> or, it, it, worse yet, Get the contractor who's brand new to prevailing wage and knows a absolutely nothing. Well, you this know, has been an eye opener for me. I mean, I I knew a teeny bit, but holy cow, Batman! You know, and really, this is just well, okay, fifty states. More than half of them have their own prevailing wage laws and forms. Out of that half, there's probably 10 or 12 now where there's multiple state agencies, each with their own prevailing wage requirements, forms, and the way they want to see information presented. Um, uh, they want all of this certified payroll data put into an electronic file and uploaded to um, online com labor compliance program like oh LCP Tracker or Alation Systems or um, Hill International. Uh, Alaska has their own. Texas DOT has their own. Maryland just came out with their own and actually Ben and I have been testing that this week. And instead of a, a nicely laid out piece of paper it becomes a machine readable document that in some respects it almost looks like HTML code hmm. um, and it, it gets put into this system and the system reads all of that HTML code or XML formatting language and then puts it into their database and Bless you. When that's done, it's it's almost instantaneous that a, a, a contractor can find out if there's a problem. Like work classification could be incorrect or rate of pay plus cash fringe is incorrect. Hmm. Um, you know, I mean, prevailing wage really has, has changed and I'm going to say something I mean, Intuit put out um, an alternate substitute federal or U.S. Department of Labor certified payroll report, like in 2009, and really they've done a disservice to their customers because they kind of make it sound like this one form will meet the needs of everywhere, and it doesn't. You know, I mean, it... it I mean, it, it's also kept us in business, yeah. but, it, you know, I mean, unfortunately, I'm not going to live forever. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're preserved. <laughs> hmm. Again, this is why I don't get spaghetti sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Claim Missouri prevailing wages. <laughs> it, you know, um, it, but it, it's... You know, you, you've really got to be organized. You, you got to be able to map this out, and and not only complete those reports and make sure that they're submitted correctly. You got to have the right data behind you to back that stuff up. Um, and coming from a statewide single prevailing wage rate, no matter where you went to work to one that now changes by county is is really difficult. Um, I mean, we just touched the tip of the iceberg. We just took the contractor who pays that fringe rate in cash. Um, union contractors, you're going to have to have Boone County fringe rates, Jackson County fringe rates, and because the, the certified payroll report wants to know that rate per hour for each one of those specific fringes, you've got to have your QuickBooks company contribution items set up to be 
Boone County Health and Welfare, Boone County Pension, Boone County Vacation, and then you go to turn around and do the same thing with Jackson County and Sal and Saline that there was no fringes, so that's just you know twelve bucks an hour or whatever it was. Um, but you know, I mean, it just it, it takes a really really detail oriented payroll clerk. Um, because if if these reports keep going in incorrect or you're not paying the employees correctly, uh, you're not gonna, the, the contractor's not going to get paid. You know, and you you usually it, unlike most like private jobs, like I hire somebody to oh I hired we hired somebody to come replace the garage doors on the garage down at the house. He's going to show up, and he's either going to want to be paid when he leaves, or he's going to give us 30 days to pay him. When you work on these federal or state-funded construction projects, you're waiting 60, 90, or 120 days to get paid. Okay, and they're not going to tell you as soon as the certified payroll report goes in. Oh, hey, this is wrong. They're going to wait until it's time to pay you and then they're going to say oh by the way your certified payroll reports for the last four weeks are wrong so and now you get your people it, yeah so now you, you you have to go back and redo your certified payrolls resubmit them and then you start that wait again I oh think payroll gosh. clerks are so underrated it, they, they are I mean, they're, they're, yeah, and and for for a business owner to hire somebody who knows nothing about payroll and thrust them into doing this type of payroll, he ought to be spanked. <laughs> <laughs> this is how people become shooters in the clock tower. Yeah, you know, I mean, seriously, this is how people go postal. Well, the, it is. I mean, it's it's nuts. It, but the process starts before that because you got to bid the job, and then you got to get the right rate of pay for the job. And if you don't do all that right, then it actually starts before the payroll clerk where it gets all fouled up. Yep. Yep. Why are and, there so many mad bombers? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really just poopy doobies. You know, I mean, there's there's a whole lot to it. I mean, because, you know, it, it, you stop and think about the guy who, Saline County, and he goes and he does a job for Bruce, and he pays his carpenters nine bucks an hour. You know, then he goes and he works on that, gets a prevailing wage job right there in his home county, and, you know, going from nine to 12 plus change, his overhead goes up and if he doesn't pay attention to the bid and there's always a wage decision in the bid that says employees classified as such and such need to be paid this amount if he doesn't pay attention to that he's gonna lose his shirt mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because they're, they're, he's not He, he may not have an opportunity to go back and resubmit a corrected bid. Um, some general contractors and some awarding agencies, if they get an extremely low bid, they'll go to the the bid submitter and say, "Hey, you know, how how did you calculate your bid?" and blah 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 blah, you know. And if they find that you know he didn't calculate prevailing wages. Then they he can resubmit one, um, but that's not always the case. Missouri will educate you. <laughs> I, I say that sarcastically. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's kind of you know it, it's it's been a real trip for our customers in Missouri, and we actually have I don't know we probably have a hundred customers in Missouri. Um, 
and I think I mean California has always been our big certified payroll state because California is very much like Missouri. Uh, I I think Missouri is soon going to become a, 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 a we're going to have a bigger impact there. You know when when everything is pretty straightforward. It's straightforward, but when it gets complicated, people really need help. And I'm here to help you. <laughs> Good. Nancy's got my back. <laughs> you know, and I mean, whether you're union, non-union, whether you pay a portion of those fringes to approved or bona fide plans, say a contractor has health insurance for his employees. He can take a credit towards the full prevailing wage fringe for a, an hourly contribution that he's annualized for health insurance. It, you know, so it, that then becomes, you know, a, another twist to the the piece, and it's almost like every contractor is different, and and you have to treat them as such, and you have to find out, you know, where do you work, what counties, what types of work classifications do your employees fall under. Um, are all your employees one work class, like flaggers, or do you have employees who are flaggers and sign installers and guardrail whoopie doopies and you know whatever? And and you know then it's you know are you union? Are you non-union? Are you paying the fringes in cash? Are you paying them to a bona fide plan? Are you paying a combination of the two? And and then with all of that stuff, then you start talking about how to set QuickBooks up to do this. And all of that involves training people, which is not easy. Well, it seems like this would be like special certified training because it's so involved. In reality, it ought to be. Um, we gotta get we gotta get tax professionals set up first. It, yeah. Then we'll worry about getting paid. I mean, really. It, you know, I mean, it, it really is. It's very, very specialized procedures and 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 training and the, the people. Nothing that you should do just winging it. it. That's right. You should not try this at home. <laughs> I promise you I will not. professionals only. Um, I I put two posts in the in the chat. One is the one that Nancy wrote and one is one that I wrote when Missouri first approved all of this. It has links to Missouri. Both of them have links to Missouri websites that will guide you in the direction to get the proper education on this for Missouri. And, and actually, I, I will add these links um, tonight to um, the, the YouTube channel. I, I, it's, 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 my, my goal is to help educate people. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I would love to take your money and do it for you, but I more so would want you to do it right. I don't want to fix your problem. I will. I, I have no problem fixing your problem. I don't want to. It's a headache. It's cheaper to get Nancy's program and let her take care of it. Sounds like it. it you know, I, I mean... The program is very much worth the money. Especially yeah, be, now. It, yeah. It, you know, I mean, a, a certified payroll report for Missouri has room for like eight employees. Okay? Say you've got a workforce of ten employees and you work on five different jobs throughout the week. It's going to take you well over an hour to do the certified payroll report for each job. And it's confusing, too, because um, you don't have the rates. When you're looking at a payroll rate, you look at the overall amount that they're being paid also. Um, what I mean by that is if you look at the federal rate, if someone gets paid $200, then you know they get X amount of federal taxes taken out. If they yep. get paid a thousand dollars, they get a different amount taken out. And so when you have little pieces of jobs here and there, but only amount to two hundred, and you add them all up, 
it's confusing. It doesn't add up to a total payroll or a total check. Yeah. Federal wise, if you understand what I mean. But, that was yeah. so confusing. <laughs> um, well, one of the okay, one of the nice things, if you can call it nice, um, about the Missouri Certified Payroll. <laughs> They, they have gross wages, this job, slash all jobs, and then all of your deductions, your federal withholding, your FICA, your Medicare, state withholding, blah, 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 all of that is based on the gross paycheck. Good. And then net wages for the week is should equal the actual net paycheck that the employee takes home. Um, New York is is a state that's really famous for trying to get everything for this specific job. Kansas does too. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kansas is yeah, Kansas is odd. <laughs> I only know that New York is a different animal altogether. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, Hawaii has one of the weirdest. They, they try and make you do an hourly rate for federal withholding. Really? On the certified payroll report, yeah. And and then they kind of have this other section of it where you're supposed to be able to go back and like reconcile it um, and, and Ben had to take and, and we had to like write up this disclaimer on how we calculated the hourly value it was like <laughs> it, you wow. had to take the total federal withholding from the gross check and divide it by the total number of hours worked everywhere Oh God! Okay, and then, yeah, I, I mean, it was like that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, depending you know, on your poison, it makes you want to drink or eat brownies. Yeah, pull your it, hair out. So you know, I, I mean, a certified <laughs> payroll is not for um, the faint at heart or the inexperienced, meaning you don't want to hire a high school kid to do payroll for prevailing it's wage. not just a plain old data entry job. You need some thought into it and you need to educate your employee. Yep. And, and, you, and you really need to educate them. I mean, not just expect them to go out somewhere and, you know, learn it for free on the internet. Right. Well, if, if I may, Nancy, if I may make a plug here, I'll train your bookkeeper. I, I don't have a problem. I'll travel to train your bookkeeper, but I will tell you this. It is not cheap. It, it, absolutely. And, and I try and tell people that too. You know, it's like I tell them, look, I provide all kinds of free training in our manuals. If you spend the time, you look in there and it will talk about how to deal with all of these quirky little situations. But if you want me on call, logged in remote, blah, blah, it's a minimum eight hours contract. Minimum. Just, just to give a clue. Um, the rate that we came up with, my staff and I, we sat down and discussed this. If you want to come to my office and have me train your bookkeeper, you're looking at at least four hours at 150 bucks an hour. Yeah. That is not negotiable. Good for you. Um, and if, you know, if it takes more than four hours, congratulations. Every 15 minutes, I'll add another hour. If, if I go 15 minutes into the fifth hour, you're going to pay for that whole fifth hour. Yep. Hello? And, and you know, I, I tell people what my rights are, and I hear them gasp on the other end, and they hang up. And then, and then I get the anonymous calls of, it doesn't work. 
because you didn't pay to get trained. A little extra time to get to did your... you read the book. <laughs> did Did you watch the videos? And I, I've been told I don't need videos. I know how to use QuickBooks. <laughs> okay, so why are they calling? Yeah, because it doesn't work. <laughs> I got my book, Nancy. I know you do. <laughs> And, and we need to like end this broadcast before we get booted off altogether. But if you want to stay and chat for a few minutes afterwards, I'll certainly.